List all possible rational zeros of the following polynomial p of x equals 2x cubed minus 5x squared minus 4x plus 3. So the possible rational zeros, we start off as p over q, where p is the factors of the constant term, and q is the factors of our leading coefficient. So leading factors of 3, that's pretty easy, it's 1 and 3, so plus or minus 1 and plus or minus 3. We include the plus or minus because it could be like negative 1 and negative 3 or positive 1 and positive 3, so we got to include both. And then q factors of the leading coefficient, that's 2, so 1 and 2. And then the last thing we want to do is we want to make sure that it's all over 1 and all over 2. So we take 1 over 1, which is 1, and then we take 3 over 1, which is 3, and then we take 1 over 2, which is 1 half. And then we take 1 over 3, which is, or 3 over 2, which is 3 halves. So these right here are all the possible rational zeros. Now back in the old days, Mrs. Taransky would have made me do synthetic division until I got the last one, and she'd probably make it negative 3 halves, but um, we're, we're being a lot nicer than that. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to graph it. If you graph it, you notice that negative 1 is a 0 from the graph, is a 0 from the graph. So <clears throat> what we're going to do is we're going to use synthetic division to get the other zeros. So negative 1 is a 0, and then we write down the coefficients, 2, negative 5, negative 4, and 3. Skip a line, draw a line, bring down the 2. Now because we're trying to find a 0 here, we want to make sure that we get 0 for the remainder, which we do. That's good. Homer would be happy. All right, so now <clears throat> the complete factorization is going to be x plus 1, and then this right here is the other polynomial that goes into the parentheses, 2x squared minus 7x plus 3. All right, can we factor that? I hope we can, because it wants us to find the complete factorization. So I'm going to set up my two sets of parentheses. And when I do that, I'm going to put 2x there and x there. Uh, how can I get negative 7 using 1 and 3? Well, if I put a negative 3 there and a negative 1 there, that gives me negative 1x. That gives me negative 7x, or negative 6x. And so that multiplies and adds together to give me negative 7. So this is the complete factorization of p of x. Now, to find the zeros, all we need to do is set each factor equal to 0 and solve. So I get x equals negative 1. And we say 2x minus 1 equals 0, and 2x equals 1, and x equals 1 half, and then x minus 3 equals 0, so x equals 3. So my zeros are then x equals negative 1, 1 half, and 3. And that's my zeros. All right, so that kind of took us step by step in finding the zeros. Um, we're going to have other problems where we're not going to have to do that, um, and we're going to keep going through that way. Now the next question is talking about complex numbers, adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing complex numbers. When we add, subtract, and multiply, it's just like I would be a variable, with the exception of if i is um, i squared, that becomes negative 1. You'll see what we mean when we get to the multiplication. So right here we got 3 minus 2i plus 4 plus 3i. So 3 plus 4 is 7. Negative 2i and 3 is just i. And so that's how easy that is. We combine the 3 and the 4 because those are the real parts. Negative 2i and 3i combine to give us the single i. All right. Over here with subtraction, I always like subtracting by changing the signs and adding. So that would give me 3 and negative 4, which would be negative 1. It gives me negative 2i and negative 3i, which would be negative 5i. So again, pretty straightforward. Adding, subtracting, no problem whatsoever. Multiplication. With multiplying, we need to FOIL. Okay? And so when we FOIL, we're going to do 3 times 4, which is 12. 3 times 3i, which is 9i. Negative 2i times 4, which is negative 8i. And then negative 2i times 3i, which is negative 6i squared. And that's where I said it gets kind of tricky, because when you see an i squared, it really becomes negative 1. 
Well, instead of writing negative 1 and negative 6 times negative 1, we're going to go through and we're just going to cancel that i squared and make that positive 6. <clears throat> now, what I can do is I'm going to combine 12 and positive 6. And that's 18. And then negative or a positive 9i and negative 8i becomes positive i. And so that right there is our solution when we multiply. Multiply just means you FOIL and uh, combine like terms making i squared negative 1. Last one, division. All right, we're going to divide by multiplying by the conjugate of the denominator. Conjugate means we change that middle term. So I'm multiplying by 4 minus 3i. And the reason we do that is when we FOIL the denominator, the i's will disappear. So I'm going to FOIL the top and FOIL the bottom, and hopefully those i's disappear. If I FOIL the top, I get 12 minus 9i minus 8i plus 6i squared. See that i squared pop up again. The bottom, I get 16 minus 12i plus 12i minus 9i squared. So let's cancel out what we can. <clears throat> this i squared makes this a negative 6. This i squared makes that a positive 9. This 12i and negative 12i cancel each other out. So you notice on the bottom we just have 16 plus 9. That's a really good thing. The top <clears throat> becomes 12 minus 6. So that's going to be 6. And negative 9i and negative 8i, it's negative 17i. And then on the bottom, we got 16 plus 9, which is 25. Now, this is not in A plus BI form. So what I need to do is I need to put the 6 over the 25. That represents the A part. Minus 17 over 25, i. And that's the B part. So this is our final answer, A plus BI or 6 over 25 minus 17 over 25. So that's our, our next steps. So check out the next video for the next two problems.